In this part of the program, we'll watch as a crew changes out a broken cross arm while working from the pole. They'll use an auxiliary cross arm to support the conductors while the broken cross arm is being replaced. Basically, an auxiliary cross arm is designed to do several things. It lifts and supports the weight of the conductor while the work is being done, and it provides insulation from the energized conductors. This is the type of auxiliary cross arm that the crew will be using. It consists of a fiberglass mast, which in this case has a movable lifting ring at one end. A set of rope blocks can be attached to the lifting ring to raise the auxiliary arm. The mast sits in pole saddles, which are attached to the pole. The pole saddles can be loosened to allow the mast to slide up and down as needed. When the pole saddles are tightened, they hold the mast and the auxiliary arm in a fixed position. A fiberglass cross arm is attached to the top end of the mast. Wire holders are clamped onto the cross arm to hold the conductors. The number of wire holders used will vary depending on the number of conductors to be lifted. When the auxiliary arm is raised, the wire holder engages the conductor. Once it's engaged, the conductor can't be removed unless the wire holder's latch is released. The weight of the conductor to be lifted can vary from job to job, depending on the size of the conductor and the span length. Auxiliary cross arms are designed to operate within specific weight and voltage limits. These weight and voltage ratings are usually displayed on the mast or the cross arm itself. It's important not to exceed any of these limits. If there is ever any question about these limits, consult your supervisor about your company procedures. With this information in mind, let's rejoin the crew that has been dispatched to replace the broken cross arm. The crew gathers the materials they'll need for the job, including the new cross arm and insulators and miscellaneous hardware. A visual inspection is made of the auxiliary arm. The crewman is looking for any signs of damage, such as cracks or splintering on the fiberglass that may render the auxiliary arm unusable. The mast is also inspected for any signs of damage. When the crewman is satisfied that the arm and all of the accessories are in good working condition, they're loaded onto the truck and safely covered and stored for the trip to the job site.